<clears throat> the second thing that you can do in a lot of t cases where you have a bad drive, and this doesn't require you to have a duplicate that's exactly the same. You just need a second drive that's larger than the first drive to copy your data onto. And this would be to image your drive in reverse. Now, why this works is you have a drive that has cache on it. So it has 2 meg, 8 meg, 16 meg, whatever size cache you have on your drive. And a drive reads forward. Everything's a pre-cache. So it's trying to read content ahead of time that it thinks you're going to go ask for. So if you have, say, a 16 meg cache and you're reading content doing a data recovery and it's on the current sector, it's looking 16 megs ahead. So if 16 megs ahead of where you're at right now fails, it's going to cause your drive to fail now. So you're not going to get that next 16 megs. You're not going to get what you're on. But if you do your drive copy in reverse, you actually image a hard drive in reverse, there is no cache. It basically is looking at the current sector, and it's not doing a pre-cache because it's not ahead of itself. It's going in reverse. So it's a good technique. Now, here's the tools that you can use to do that. There's only three tools that I know of that do it. There may be more, so I apologize if I missed anybody. But uh, DD Rescue actually has a specific tag in it that actually makes it run in reverse. And so DD Rescue, being a free Linux tool, is your best first option. And there is a script that someone wrote that's called uh, DDR Help. And those two together can actually image the drive in reverse. If it can't get a sector, it can go back and try to pick up a sector. But you know, other than the fact that you've got to make sure that you know how to use Linux and actually get that done, it's a free tool. Everything else besides that is not free. So you get to something like Media, Media Tools Pro, which is around $400, and it's a Windows package. Uh, it can read a drive in reverse as well. There may be a, uh, a setting for that in Byteback as well. And then the next one would be a piece of hardware that's about $4,000. It's called the Deep Spar Disk Imager. Uh, it does a lot more other things that might be really useful, but you're probably not going to spend $4,000 on an imager if you're not going to spend $600 on your drive. So... So, uh, so anyway, you, uh, you guys that are already using Linux, you probably already know how to use uh, most of the stuff that you'll find in D, uh, DD Rescue. And it's a quick, easy way, but it may take days. I'm just warning you that once you start doing an image that has errors, it may take days for it to actually pick up, and in some really long cases, may take a month. Uh, but you've got to keep an eye on it, and you'll know what it's doing. <clears throat> The next one is a head replacement. This is one that you can actually do without any real fancy tools. Basically, you're going to get a torque wrench, uh, a torque screwdriver, and you're going to disassemble your drive and you're going to move it. Now, if you have multiple platters, you can do a head replacement and move all the electronics and all the pieces at the same time without having to buy any fancy tools at all. But uh, if it has a multi-platter, you can do it. But a single platter, it's easier to actually move the platter than it is to try to move the heads. So this is, again, if you don't want to spend any money on a tool to move a platter, you could actually move your heads. And the heads, you basically are going to take paper. You're going to take post-it notes, you're going to fold them, and you're going to stick them between the heads to try to keep the heads apart. Now, it makes better sense for you to fold it in a V-shape so that the V-shape is facing the platter. Because when you put the heads and you align them back on the new drive, you can push the V-shape up onto the platter on both sides and then move the head into both sides. Kind of like what this ramp is doing. You'll see this ramp right here on the right. It keeps the heads aligned when it's physically on the outside. Now, some drives actually have the heads parked in the middle. And so what you want to do is you want to turn the platter in reverse from the head so that it's passing underneath the arm and move the heads to the outside and then put your paper in there and move the heads off and pull them off of the assembly. And then I would suggest before you take the assembly, there's two ways to do this, which is I disassemble the good drive and, uh, and then I have my piece and I'm going to move it to the bad drive. I would say you disassemble your bad drive first and get the arm and stuff out of the way because if there's damage, you're probably going to see it then. You're going to see I got a big scratch on my platter and I don't want to ruin this other disc that I already have. So it's good to take a look at it before you go ahead and disassemble your good drive or you'll be just trashing two drives. And again, if you take your time and you use this, and I'm not going to tell you it's going to take five minutes. It's, this is probably going to take you about an hour to two hours to do minimum to actually get everything lined up. But you've got to pay really good attention to how you line back up the 
physical platter itself, the heads on the platter to get that to work. But now the platter swap, you can easily do a single platter swap just by disassembling this. You don't want to touch it, you don't want to do anything, and you move it to a new drive, and you do the same thing that you'll do with the heads where you actually have put the paper in the edge of the heads so that you can use a V-shape to try to push the heads back up onto the platter when you've actually moved it in and assembled it. <clears throat> so then the next thing we're going to talk about is the multi-platter swap. Now the multi-platter swap is a special tool that you're going to have to use. Now this tool costs in the neighborhood of $250. Uh, it may cost a little bit more depending on where you get it from and where it's shipped from. It comes with a stand. It comes with a special stand to hold the two caddies in place so that you can actually move the platters, pull the platters up, and move them to another drive without having to uh, sit there and try to hold it yourself and keep it steady. And it's, it's cut in a special way, too, so that you can take the screws off of the bottom of the drive while it's sitting there. This thing looks a lot like a coffee can, uh, and it's not made a whole lot better, actually, either. It's a... Uh, the top ring is a solid piece of metal and they have basically cut a slit in the side here where you can see where there's a piece of metal that's folded around it. The whole point of the slit is that you can take that and you can push down on the slit and it will cause the, uh, the item to squeeze around the platters holding the platters together at the same time. So I have moved three and four platters with this before at the same time, and it has successfully held them all in place, and I've been able to do a recovery after I realign the heads and get everything the way it's supposed to be. The other thing that this tool does that's a little bit different than just using a coffee can, if we can, we can cut a coffee can, I have heard that you can possibly use uh, a piston removal tool that might cost in the neighborhood of $5, $20, something in that neighborhood and make it work the same way. And so we're kind of practicing with it, trying to figure out if there's a, a piston removal tool that's the right size. Because you, when you buy this tool, you get two. You get one that's a two and a half inch, and you get one that's a three and a half inch. Well, on the piston tools, well, they're different sizes for every single thing that you have. If you have a motorcycle or BMW or something, they're all different sizes. But I've heard that people have accomplished it. The only thing is, a piston tool is not gonna give you this little plate that's hanging down in the middle. This little plate that's ha <clears throat> hanging ha performs one cool option, which is when you've put this on your drive and you remove the screws from it, this holds the screws so they don't roll around on your platter. So other than you know taking a nice little magnet and trying to catch the screw as you get it undone, some of these drives have eight or ten screws in them. Uh, some of them only have three. But uh, other than trying to like grab them or catch them when it happens, uh, you're going to be you know, pressing your luck trying to keep the screws from rolling around. So this particular device, uh, I would say it's pretty necessary, but again, like I said, you have an option of not, um, not doing a platter if you can do the heads. So this is how this works. Basically, you disassemble the section where your heads are, and you're going to get it out of the way. And now you'll just have this gap, this space where you can actually push something down. And it tends to work better if you do it a little bit to the right where the heads are parked. That way, when you put it in the new drive, uh, you're not going to be hitting the head assembly. So you take this and you put it over your platters. And then you push this little locking mechanism down. And that will hold them in place. And you need to make sure you have it firmly. So once you actually get this this tool in place, you want to make sure you push it down enough before you lock it so that you're actually hitting the bottom of the casing of the hard drive. And then when you push this down, it'll tighten around them. And then you can stick your screwdriver in here and undo these screws. And as you can see, this particular one, uh, I mean, I just let them kind of sit in the tray and I go ahead and move the drive and then I try to line them back up again. But if you're going to use our piston tool, you're going to have to catch them yourself. <clears throat> 